Hi, this is Linda and today we're going to have a look at the draw tools within designer and as you can see I'm in the tools tab and if I hover over pencil which is in the draw section just here you can see that it actually gives me the shortcut for that which is just a letter P so if I want to choose that one from the keyboard all I do is press P so I'm going to select that one and bring it over into the workspace and as you can see it's now transferred into a pencil shape which is really handy because what I'm going to do is pencil. So I'm going to click and hold my left mouse button and I'm going to just drag it around the screen and create some form of odd shape. And when I let go you can see that I'm still attached to that last blue dot by a dashed line but I have all these other blue dots around here. They are adjustment nodes and I'll come back to those shortly. But as you can see with this one, I'm still, like I say, attached to that last blue node just there by the dashed line, even though I've let go of the mouse. So if I hold down my mouse button again, so left click, hold down and draw again, and that looks like a separate line. When I let go of my mouse, it's actually joined them up just here. So in order to produce separate lines with your pencil you need to right click and that has created that one line. If I now want to draw another line I'll click hold and drag again and create a separate line. Right click to release and I've got now two separate line drawings. So that's pencil. If I now hover over line you'll see I get L as a shortcut. There's a theme here folks. L for a shortcut and if I go through them all actually while we're up at this one curve is C for a shortcut, arc is A for a shortcut key and bezier is B. As I say there's a theme running through there. So I'm going to click on the line tool. Now with this one I have to left click at every point because I'm drawing a straight line. If you have your snap to um, connected or activated on here, you can snap to all these different points within your grid or you can snap to wherever it is that you need to if you've not got those on. So you could be between those areas there. So I'm just going to left click and release in several different points. And as you can see, it's a straight line between each point. Now, although I am still connected here, um, with my mouse to this last node, if I click away again, it is actually still giving me a line. So to get away from that one and start another one, I have to right click. Now if I right click over here, it won't put me the last mark just there. So if I right click, I'll show you. Okay, so the last mark that you made, the last click that you made with the left mouse button will be where that line finishes. So if I need it to finish there, I need to left click first and then right click and it will set the lines for you. Okay. We'll delete those and we'll go on to the curve. Again, it's uh, changed. Now if you notice as well as I'm going along this, first of all we had the pencil which was where the cursor was, then we had a line and now we have a curve which is on an angle. For this one I'm going to just click around in different areas and to start off with you think that it's gone wrong because you've got a straight line. Just keep clicking and it will start to create the curve. Now these curves are not equal curves as you can see. These are slightly random curves but that might be what you're wanting. And again although I'm attached with my dashed line just there if I right click over here because I haven't given it a finish point, if I right click there, it finishes just there. And again, you can just carry on and create those curves wherever you want them to be. If I click on arc now, this works differently. This you need a 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3 sequence to get the arcs. And these are all equal arcs. So if I click there for the first one, that's number one. Again, you get a dashed line. Number two, 
looks like it's gone wrong because it's straight. But if I click there as three, it gives you an arc. And if I click there and there, so that's the two, three, two, three. So that is the one, two, three. That three for the next arc then becomes the one. So it's two, three, two, three, and I'll click there, two, three. Now, right click away or to finish. And as you can see, the difference between the curve tool and the arc tool is that these are equal arcs. Whereas with the curve, they weren't. So if you're wanting a nice smooth curve within your drawing, this is the one to use. Curve, you can adjust, as you'll see, but this is the nice one. And obviously here we've got semicircles because of the way that I clicked it. And here, because it's arced all the way around, it's going to be more of a circle. OK. The last one that we're going to have a look at is the Bezier tool. And this is quite a fun one, but quite um, finicky to master. Now, I'm going to left click, as you can see, with the where the mouse is now as well, I have um, a square with a wiggle from each side, and that's the Bezier tool. If I left click there and don't drag, and then just left click there, don't drag, left click there, I get straight lines. Now if I left click here, hold and drag, it starts to produce a curve. And I've still got the left mouse button pressed, and as you can see, it's affecting the whole of that line. So the further away I drag it, the larger that curve becomes. And I can angle that curve as well. So I've let go of the mouse and I'll click there and I'll do the same again. Now you also will notice that as I am dragging away from my point that I clicked on, the curve is going in the opposite direction. And this is the bit that I say can be a little bit awkward to get the hang of to start off with. But it's quite fun. And again, if you just left click, left click, left click, you get the straight lines. Again, right click away and you have those lines that you've produced. So if you are on all of these, if you are creating a design and you click and you think, oh, that's in the wrong place, you don't have to start all over again. While you've still got that tool active, click or press your backspace key and it takes you back to the previous node. Backspace, 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 backspace. And you can do that as many times as you need to. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one like that. Now I did say at the beginning that I would show you how to change these shapes and explain the nodes to you. So I'm going to go over here now to the shape tool and it's selected the last one that I've drawn for you. Now, if you look at these, this line, you can see that some are circles and some have squares. The squares are line points and the circles are not. These can be either smooth, cusp, or symmetrical, depending on what it is that it's been set to. So let's go through these one by one. So I'm going to right click on that node and now you can see that I have a selection here for line, cusp, smooth or symmetrical. So I'm going to click symmetrical to start off with. Now did you see it jump behind there? And now what I have is two handles here, so that's the node and I have two handles here. And I can adjust the shape of these lines by dragging and clicking on these handles and moving them around. I can also drag or call click and drag on these as well and that will take them to wherever I want them to be. So if I want it to be up instead of down I'll leave it there and if I want it back down I'll drag it there. And because this is symmetrical you can see that both handles are moving at the same time and it's affecting both sides equally. So this is stretching those sides and if I tilt them it will tilt both sides of that node at the same time as well. 
So let's now make that one a smooth. Again, it's jumped back. But now you can see that one is slightly longer than the other. And if I just move in slightly for you, then you can see. So that one is slightly shorter than that one. So if I click on that now and move it, you can see that side is the only one that is being affected. Can you see? I'm going to change it again and I'm going to go to cusp. Now that side is the only one that is moving. And even if I twist it around this time, it's not affecting the other side. And if I go back to smooth with that one, if I tilt it, can you see both sides are tilting? And if I stretch it, just that one side moves. And I can do that on that side as well. However, with cusp, go back to cusp, so it's right click and choose cusp just that one side moves. doesn't matter what I do with it. This side doesn't get affected. You can also see while I'm clicking on these that the next one along will be highlighted. Now that one is aligned so that one will act differently. If I click on that one you can see that the next node along has the nearest handle uh, come live. So you can see where it is that you, you're going to be doing and what you're going to be switching around. So if you have trouble getting hold of one, this is a nice way of doing it as well. So you can click on that one and these will become live. So we'll come back to this one again. And I'll drag that one in. And I'm going to right click on there again and I'm going to click line. Now you can see it's gone to a square and it has no handles. This is the only way that I can affect that line now is by using the nodes on the other or on the next one along, using the handles on the next node along. Can you see? I can still click on it and drag it. But the only way to change any of the angles is to do it that way or to use the next one along and click and drag it that way. Now, as you can see, because I'm coming across here with the arrow, as I get near to the line, I get that curve, uh, the arc um, symbol, sorry, underneath it. And I can push that around as well. Now, if you noticed on that one, if I just could undo there, just here I have two line nodes, so the square. But if I click on that, and push and release, they change. Because now we don't have a line, we have a curve. So they will change with you as you go along. Lots of fun, lots of options to do. If you're creating designs and they're not quite in the right place, if you are bringing a design in that you want to fit in an area, for example, and this doesn't quite fit into that corner, you can drag it in to fit. So you can take it from the Pro Stitcher on your machine into here, drag these around to fit and take it back to the Pro Stitcher. Hope that's explained a little bit of it for you and have fun playing.